Hey there, welcome back to STM32 Coding for Everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily register account event using the STM32 hardware timer. Now, right now, when I press this uh, touch button, I'm able to control this LED. Now, what if you want to control the LED or whatever external device you have attached to your microcontroller only after registering maybe five touches or five button press if you're going to be using the onboard uh, buttons on your nuclear board. So there is a way to achieve this by writing a lot of if else loop statement where you can basically increment and decrement variables and then toggle your LEDs. But that will means writing a state machine. Okay. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do it just by a simple timer overflow. Now to do that, let's go ahead and create a new project. So we're going to go to file, new STM32 project. It's going to initialize the target selector. So just bear with me for a second here. When the target selector pop up, you're going to click on board if you are using a nuclear board or an MCU if you've got your STM32 basically on any type of PCB that you might be using. Then you're going to tap the name of your board. Mine is F334, right? So the board pops up. And then I'm going to click on the board. Then I'm going to click on next. Great. Now we're not going to go through the other details here because I've got a tutorial already explaining this process. So I'm going to write the name of my project here. STM32 underscore event underscore counter. Great. Then I'm going to say finish. That's all you need. And we're going to initialize everything. So it's going to load the IOC and basically set up everything for us ready so we can get going. Great, so once your IOC interface is done loading, once again, we're going to go ahead and clear all the pins because we do not want to generate unnecessary code that we won't be using. Great, so we're going to be heading straight over to the timers and I'm going to select timer one. And we're going to choose the clock source. And this time around, we're not gonna use the internal clock source. We're going to use the external Cloxus ETR2. Great. So as soon as I select that, you can see that PC4 here already have been selected. So this basically means an interrupt have been attached to PC4 and I'm going to be registering events coming from external sources. Great. So as you can see here, we're using the external source and we didn't bother to basically set up the internal clock source here. So everything is disabled and the clock configuration will be left as is here. There is nothing that we can change there. This is going to be very simple uh, timer overflow setup. Now, once we come here, you're going to see that you've got some variable that must be changed here. And we are only going to change one variable. That is the counter period auto reload. So this is where we basically just going to set up a value that we want to change. This can take up to 16 bits. That is why you can see the value is already set up to 65,536. So if you change it to, let's say, 65,800 and you hit enter, it's going to go back to 65,000 because this variable can only hold the 16 bits and 16 bits maximum is this value. Great. That's a side note. So we're going to enter a value for because we want to trigger, basically turn on this LED when we press four times on one of these buttons here okay i'm going to be using the touch button you can implement yourself to use the internal button on your nuclear board you must just make sure uh, which uh, external timer is attached to your internal button here which is on pc 13 it is on pc 13 where is pc 13 let's just find there's pc 13 and we do not have etr on pc 13 so you have to check where you've got it now what you can do is if you're going to be using this button here you can take a, a wire you can bridge a wire to whatever pin your timer one etr is registered so you're just going to bridge it so which means the action that's going to be happening on pc 13 is going to be bridged to that pin that got that function set up then you'll be good to go Great. So now everything is done here. The next thing we need to do here is to basically enable the update timer one update and timer 16 interrupt. So we're going to just click here and 
set up the LED. We must not forget the LED here. So on PS7. So I'm just going to choose PS7 LED and I will set it as an output. And I'm going to give this a name of LED. Great. So that's all we need to do here. I'm going to go ahead and generate the source code and hopefully everything is going to work as intended. Once the code generation is done and dusted, you can go ahead and explore whatever have been generated for you. If you want to understand how things are going on here, you can just see the value of four that we've set up here and other variable are set to zero. Great. Now we need to change certain things here. Basically, we need to start the timer. OK, so to start the timer, we've got a variable for timer one that's been already set up here. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and just copy uh, this and we need to call that function. So that function is H A L H A L underscore time underscore base and start IT start it start underscore it that's the one great so then we need to pass the reference here and timer one great so this is all we need to do here now we can go ahead and find the function the callback function so that is the time period elapsed callback so i'm going to copy it from one of these uh, projects here i don't want to go into that large source code so we can find it and I'm going to just copy it right here. So this is a function. I will just copy everything. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my main function and paste it here. Now we do not need all these other stuff here. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear and clear. So all we have is the toggle that we want to toggle the LED once the counter been registered. Now remember at this point, this function is only going to be called back only after we've registered four counts. You can see we've entered the value of four there. Only after the four counts have been registered, then this function is going to be called and we're going to toggle the LED. So you can put whatever you want to run in here. So now here we need to find the information for our LED. So let's go ahead and find the information for the LED. Um, it is in the header file man.h okay so there it is so it's led pin and gpio led gpio port so that basically what it is so this is led pin led gpio port now i can just remove zero simply here and i will be good to go so this should be enough and i'm going to build this so let's first build this and just to make sure that uh, everything have gone well that this does not crash great so the build is completed and i can go ahead and run this onto my project here so stm32 event counter okay let's go let's run it in and so we didn't place any variable that we can monitor there so we basically just going to be counting on the number of battle we're going to register here Great. So the LED is already on. So now I'm not sure. So this is PC4 for me. So that's PC4. And I'm not sure which one is PC4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check all of them. Right. Because I basically just change. Um, I can't remember exactly the wiring on this uh, module here. So one, two, three, four. Nothing. One, two, three, four. Nothing one two three four oops there it is so this is my button so this is my button so as you can see one two three four five oops so i'm not getting it on four but rather five does this has to do with the bounce or something else is going on here let's try again one two three four five something to do with that so if you guys are also uh, finding the button to toggle after five uh, count instead of four please let me know or what you can do is change the value to three and see if it's going to be four right and change it to another number and see if there's always going to be that plus one 
so that is it guys for this quick tutorial so now you know if you want to have an action to occur only after a certain amount of events on the external uh, side of your microcontroller then this is how you can basically do it very easily with very little code so thank you guys for watching if you find it useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel that will be highly appreciated until next time cheers